Gentlemen, we ready to start? Ready to shoot? Uh, wow. I guess bright eyed and bushy tailed, huh? <laughs> I love those sunglasses too. Those are amazing. Mark Abbey, they're ballistic rated too. Are they really? Yes, they are. That's awesome. Where'd you get those? Where are those? Pit Viper. That's an awesome name too. <laughs> and, uh, their website is like, it's like retro. You look like a professional wrestler. <laughs> That's amazing. I was going to say porn star. <laughs> you watch different porn than I do, dude. Uh, it's a classic. It's a you watch the classic. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, Joel loves that. We're off to a great start. We are a great, we're off to a great start. <laughs> okay. The plan, the next couple days, we're going to go through USPSA fundamentals kind of from the ground up. So you're going to shoot a stage cold this morning. I'm not even going to really beat you up with a whole... I'm not going to really beat you up about it. I just want to see everybody shoot cold because they only get to see that once a day. So we'll shoot a stage cold and we'll get into like marksmanship fundamentals. So we make sure everybody's gun zeroed. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. And then, you know, away we go with, you know, uh, practical pace of shooting, rapid fire, target transitions, that sort of thing. We'll do movement tomorrow. Okay, you're moving your feet for pretty much everything tomorrow. Uh, the idea after a couple days is you should have a good idea of what it is to practice and how to get better. Um, you're not really going to get better in a couple of days, most probably. Maybe you will. But uh, most, most of you guys have all shot before, I mean, quite a bit. It, it's going to take time to change things. Uh, what I'd like to do is over over the course of a couple of days, highlight for you <laughs> in very plain ways. Like You'll see like, yep, this is what my habit is. This would be a better habit. And then hopefully you understand how to train in a new, better habit, a better way of doing business. Um, for every drill that we do, there'll be a live fire thing. But the important thing to pay attention to is I'll show you how to do dry fire exercises to improve any individual component of your skill. Um, that's really the magic. So when you leave here, you can go do you know, specific dry fire exercises that are gonna solve your problems. Uh, that's the idea. You, you'll leave here with homework and a, and a good sense of what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Um, as far as the schedule, we will sh start shooting uh, after the stage. We'll be shooting all morning, take a little lunch break, shoot all afternoon, that kind of thing. Um, probably shoot till like 4, 4.30, depending on you know how you guys last or how everything holds up. And we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Uh, as far as ammo, what did, what did you guys, Joel told you 1,000, right? What do you tell him for ammo? I told him 5,000. No, like 5, 750. Okay, well, if you, you can get by with 750 rounds for this. You're going to have to you're going to have to manage your ammunition. If you want to shoot more, you're going to shoot 1,000, 1,200, whatever. You can shoot as much or as little as you want. Um, to give you an idea as like how much ammo like you'll be inclined to use, probably this morning, we'll, this morning we'll use the, a lot of ammo. Three, maybe 400 rounds this morning if you want to shoot a lot. And then consumption is going to slow down considerably. So probably like, you know, 150, 200 rounds this afternoon, and then the same thing tomorrow. Like 200 rounds in the morning, 200 rounds in the afternoon. You can get by with that if that's what you want to do. Again, if you want to shoot more, you're going to be able to shoot as much as you want. Um, so like, just keep that in mind, and if you want to shoot less, just manage your ammo and, and use less ammo, and, and you'll be able to get through everything, no problem. But the thing that usually gets people wigged out is we shoot a lot this morning like a lot um so you'll you'll burn up a scary amount of ammo in the morning but then like I said, consumption will slow down considerably uh any questions about that makes sense all right so for safety rules we're going to do it just like uspsa on the stage it'll be like one dude shooting one guy with a timer even if there'll be times where you can shoot on outside of my supervision it'll just be one guy shooting at a time one guy with a timer you know, be adults about it and all that stuff. On the Over here, when we're doing drills, it'll be different. Uh, think about it like hot range, cold range type of thing. So when you get a make ready from that point on, as far as I'm concerned, as long as it's safe, you can handle your gun as and when you need to. And I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to be giving you a bunch of commands. So it'll be, you get a beep, do a repetition of the drill, and then expect that you're going to do it again. You know, reload if you have to, pull strip, get ready to go again. You know, like I'm, I'm not gonna like shout out. Just you know, manage your ammo, manage your situation. If you need to, if you need to check something, like you want to check your dot, you can just draw your gun and do that. Like you don't have to ask. Um, again, as long as, as long as nobody's downrange, that's safe. Like it's a hot range. Like we'll just expect that that's okay. 
when we're done doing, you know, the drill, do, done doing repetitions, it'll be, all right, unload, and then everybody as a group will unload, and then be very aware, don't start walking down range until everybody's unloaded and holstered, and then go down range and check out the targets. So, but think about it like that, hot range or cold range, like, and that'll, that'll work pretty well. Also, if you'd like to dry fire, which I encourage you to do so, um, if you're waiting for your turn to shoot on a drill, every, everything's paced and nobody's down range, you can dry fire. Like, I want you to do that. But just, you know, be aware of what's going on around you. Communicate with other people. Um, if people are dry firing and you want to go down range, just communicate that you want to go down range. Everybody holster up, go down range. Uh, it, no problem. So, kind of big boy rules. Got one for everybody? All right, like I said, if you, can dry, if you want to dry, I encourage you to dry fire on stuff before you shoot it. So it's going to help make your ammo use a lot more productive. Okay, so, uh, yeah, all right, uh, any questions about any of that stuff? All right, well, we're going to go do a stage just like you would in a match to walk through it, shoot it. We're not going to keep score, but I can see everybody shoot cold, and then we'll get into the stuff. All right, we've got one quick test we have to do. I, I hate doing group shooting. Like it, I despise it. So uh, we're gonna just check your slow fire shooting. If as a group, listen careful this part, as a group we can pass this, like everybody can shoot the center of the target, you know, without a time limit. We don't have to do this anymore and then we can start shooting faster. I would really like that, okay? So the exercise will be pretty simple. Get the make ready, load, holster, okay? At the tone, you're gonna draw and shoot 10 rounds, no time limit, as accurate as you can. That sound good? And we don't want to do group shooting, right? Because it sucks. Okay, so let's try to do well on this. All right, so if you line up, grab a target. Please confer with your neighbor. Um, I'll do a two for, I'll make sure your gun's zeroed. We'll have a little chat. And can I borrow some, a magazine that fits in this particular gun? All right, guys. First, first things first, uh, what's an acceptable outcome on this? Acceptable. Alphas. At least all alphas. Um, and I'll say for me, if I'm doing exercise like this, I'm going to try to shoot the gun as good as the gun will mechanically shoot, whatever that is. So I'm trying to shoot the gun like literally as straight as possible. All right, so first things first, let's talk about how to hold the gun. As far as hand position, it's not really that complicated of a question. I mean, pretty much everyone I saw is doing the position part right. Firing hand up, high on the back strap, support hand wrapped around the gun like so. If you want to do something like this, or this, or this even, all of that is cool, that is fine. It just has to be the same every time is the, is the problem. So the easiest recommendation is to run your firing hand into the trigger guard here and wrap around and crush. Now with my support hand, the key is making contact right here on the gun. If, if, my, if the way I grab the gun, my fingers fall like this, on the gun, you see there's not much space here for my support hand. This way I would say, hey, this gun doesn't fit. I need a fatter grip, so I have something to hang on to here. Does that make sense? Like, the mo like you're going to get your control from your support hand being in contact here. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of gun to hold on to. And that if, if I talk to you about the way your gun fits, that'll probably be what I'm saying. is like, hey, we need to make this thing fatter so you can hang on to it. Uh, okay, so hand position. Not very complicated. Hand pressure is different. That's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, so what I want you to do is with your firing hand, you just hold the gun so it doesn't move around inside your hand. Uh, the more and more pressure you put with you, you clamp on with your firing hand, the more and more difficult it becomes to quickly and independently move your trigger finger. Okay, so everybody will kind of perceive things differently. But the key is you just hold the gun with your firing hand. You don't clamp on it or try to push the gun out of re recoil with your firing hand. That becomes very, very complicated to do. You just hold the gun, okay? You wanna get your control from the support hand. Wrap it around and crush here into the gun. How hard with this hand? As hard as you can. Yeah, until, pretty, pretty, until yeah, until you get the Parkinson shake going on. Like, yep. real, like, you don't have to hold. I mean, if you're shooting, honestly, if you're shooting one of these sissy, like, 50 ounce nine millimeters with like a one pound trigger. I mean, being honest, you don't need the, as much grip strength with that. But gripping down harder, really nothing bad, nothing really bad is gonna happen. Like just, it'll just the more control or whatever. Um, the lighter your gun is and the more, the more uh, powder you put in your loads, the more important it becomes to clamp that support hand onto the gun. But what, what's difficult for people is it's different pressures. 
right? So you're just holding the gun here and all the controls coming from this side. And as you shoot, especially faster and faster and faster, the tendency is you start clamping down with your fire hand. There's a lot of bad things happen, as you'll see. Okay? But for now, hold, think about it. I think about it like hold, crush, or fire control, recoil control, something like that. Okay, now, as far as this exercise, we're shooting the gun slowly. All you're gonna do is look at the spot you wanna hit, put the gun up on that spot, and I'm gonna see my sights floating around. Like I can't hold the gun perfectly still because you know, my heart's beating and the wind's blowing a little bit, all that sort of thing. So I see the sight moving, what can I do about that? Nothing, so what should I do about that? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Now that's easy to say, intellectually easy to say, but it's hard to actually do, especially under pressure to match. It's very common. You see the sight, you know, perfect, flash perfectly on a target. You're trying to shoot in a hurry. And then you want to trigger that shot off immediately and end up pushing down on the gun or moving the gun when you pull the trigger. It's, it's important that you mentally, you accept that the gun's going to wobble a little bit. And then you understand the best I can do is just to release the shot without influencing the gun around, or without moving the gun, okay? So what I mean is I'm hold, crush, look at the center, the sights are wobbling a little bit, okay. Now I'm gonna start adding pressure on the trigger. Press, 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 until the gun goes off, all right? And then I just repeat that process over and over again. Okay, make sure your gun's there. So hold, crush, look at the center. All right, sights are wobbling. Press, 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 press. press gun goes off okay do it again stay in there press 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 now the gun goes off okay press 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 now the gun goes off and so on okay the gun's there okay. um now our target in front of here that i'm just checking just confirming this gun is in fact zeroed i learned this shit the hard way too you can just holster it hot if you're fine um i learned the hard way of so make sure i check everyone's gun this is the most this target out here is the most common situation that you're going to see Right where the gun is down low and left, and we have a right-handed shooter. So what's happening here is the thing I'm talking about, where you're pushing down on the gun, flexing your fingers, influence, doing something with your firing hand as you're triggering the shot and pushing down on the gun. That's what's happening. So what we got to do, the dry fire way to practice this is just what I was doing. Hold, crush, okay, look at the center. Press, 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 press. And here's the weird part. <laughs> Mentally, I want you to put your focus on your hand, on your firing hand. So don't get too wrapped up in what the sights are doing. You just look at a spot, put the gun there, and start the sights start floating. Or if it's a dot, it just starts floating right there. Like, okay, cool. Put your brain right here on your hand. And then your job is just to release that shot out of the gun without moving anything. Okay? And if you if you push down on the gun or push the gun sideways, hopefully you see the sight blip over, you feel something in your hand, you can like connect that together, it'll annoy you, and then eventually you'll stop doing it. All right, that's the idea here, okay? Does this make sense to everybody? Again, the hard thing is get your focus on your hand, hold, crush, mount the gun, sights where you're okay, then just add, stack up pressure on the trigger carefully until the shot goes out of the gun. Shall we give it, a, oh, and I should say, what's, like, uh, all A's is like the minimum standard for this, I would say, like the bare minimum. And it's it should be achievable pretty quickly with very little training, as long as you just are mentally engaged with what your hand's doing. Should we try it again? All right, so let's get up back up on the line. You can do some dry fire. We will talk. I want you to watch my gun as I do this. That's going to tell you the story of uh, what I want you to do. Okay, so as you're watching the gun, you can see the gun comes down out of recoil and then the next shot goes off immediately, right? You're all seeing this? All right, this is the time limit for everybody. You're all going to shoot this, this speed. It's like sight, press, sight, press, sight, press, exactly. Okay, 
So what we're trying to simulate, what we're trying to uh, replicate here is the challenge that you're gonna have on a stage. So uh, let's say the more challenging shots, the targets with no shoots on them, the mini poppers, this is the way you want to. This is the way you want to shoot them. Where it's like you look at it, the sight, the sight flashes in front of your eye, and you're like, "Yep, now, boom!" And then you send that shot. Yeah, that's what you want. Now, what do you reckon the most common marksmanship error is going to be when you're doing that? Yeah, exactly. Especially if you're juiced up, you're in a hurry, you're trying to look cool. All of these important things. Uh, you're going to tend like the tendency is you tense up your hand and you push into the gun or push the gun sideways, some type of shit like that. What we're trying to do here is just recreate that circumstance where it's like you're being forced to shoot at a pace that that starts to happen, okay? Now, we can, we can slow down and get your hits if you want. Um, whereas, like, as we just saw, like, I can always slow down and like, okay, press the trigger, super careful, and then, and then the shot will go where I want, right? But if you go so slow, like eventually the time becomes the hits become irrelevant because of the time okay so we're trying to learn to shoot at practical speed or i'd say shoot at the pace of your eyes precisely at the pace of your eyes exactly what you're seeing so that's what we want to try to do okay so for this drill like we're not stigmatizing mistakes it's not like if you shoot a bad shot like you have to go home or anything it's like what i would like is that you're shooting, shooting, okay. Then you push down to the gun. You're like, oh, fuck, I, I felt that. I saw that. I see that. And then we're going to try to, you know, maintain the same pace of your shooting and then just get your hand to cooperate with you so you're not diving down. And you get that? Okay. So this is, like, this is not a performance exercise or anything. I don't want you to slow down and get your hits. I want you to shoot at the pace of your vision and try to correct those issues at speed. Again, it, it is a perfectly acceptable answer for me if you, you know, push down on the gun, you're like, oh, fuck, I shanked one, and you keep shooting, and, you're, and then I can say, hey, which shot was that? And you're like, yeah, that was the third shot. I, I felt that. And that's a good answer because if you keep working with it, you're going to improve and make that stuff go away. Does that make sense to everyone? That, that's what we're looking for. Okay. So uh, let's talk through some ammo. At the beginning of the exercise, you're not being timed on your draw. So for the first part, I just want you to draw your gun, look at a spot on the target, the gun comes up, and you take all the time you need to get your grip ready. So like get a grip that you're happy with before you start shooting. We're not assessing the draw speed, I don't give a shit. I just want you to learn what the grip ought to feel like, okay? That's clear as well? All right, so not rushing on that, just draw, put the gun up, and look at a spot, okay. Now, as you're shooting this, like, the re uh, or, sorry, as you're shooting this, I want you to focus on a small spot on the target. Like, your actual target is going to be a point here about the size of a paster, okay? So as soon as you see your dot flash on that spot and look like a dot, or you see your front sight come back down on the notch against that paster size spot in the back, you're going to send that shot. We're not considering, really, the scoring rings. I just want you to look, look really small and do your best to drive bullets on top of that spot, okay? Focusing on the spot instead of the target is what I, or focusing on that spot on the target is what I want as opposed to you focusing on your sights, okay? Well, you're gonna hear this a lot from me. You're gonna hit where you look for better or worse, okay? So your, your actual target is a small spot here, even though at the pace you're shooting, you're not really going to be able to hit it. But like for, for USPSA, we're always going to be going through the stages, driving your attention to a small spot on every target, and then really aggressively shooting at that spot, even though you're never really going to hit that spot. It's like this duality thing, right? You're, you're trying to hit small, but you're going to be shooting aggressively, so it never really happens. Okay? Is that part clear? All right. Now, when, common errors when it comes to this, obviously. Tense up that firing hand for a right-handed dude. You're gonna to start to push shots in this direction, okay? Or like the, the the easiest correction there is, hey, relax your hand. Hey, put your brain on your hand. Some guys get good success when they put their brain on their forearm, holding that still. It'll be something like that. I want you to just put your attention on your your hand, your forearm, and you hold that still, and you're really gonna mitigate pushing the shots to the side or pushing them down. You might also get shots that trend up high, okay? 
your support hand can help that. And then the other thing is, ensure that you are indeed focused on a spot on the target. Okay? Uh, if you start focusing on the sights, your shots are going to tend to track up on targets. Why? Okay. So if I'm looking at a spot on the target, the gun's always going to steer back to that spot. If my sights, if I'm looking at my, my, whether it's a dot or if iron sight, doesn't matter. If I start focusing on that, the target will become blurry brown thing. And I'll shoot and the sight will come back down. It'll be like, shoot, it comes back down. But it's against brown, but maybe it's not quite the same place. And then over time, those shots kind of track up. So if you see, see shots tracking up, that's, that's a, a hint. You're, you're probably indeed focusing on your sight. Okay. Uh, what you can do to mitigate that, turn down your dot brightness, occlude, cover the front of the dot, um, put a sharpie over the top of your fiber to dull it. So I should be able to see red thing here, but it shouldn't be so bright that it sucks my eye onto it. Okay, so adjusting your sight configuration that can help you indeed remain target focused. So this is important. Uh, there's one other thing that we should talk about here and that's recoil control. I want you to do recoil control with your eyes. Okay, you know, it sounds crazy as shit, so I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna shoot in the dirt, so watch my watch my gun and the body and my body mechanics here. If I super wide stance, bend my knees, to flex up everything, roll my shoulders out, and crush the gun, like you can see, I'm very tense. A lot of effort right now. Now watch how the gun behaves. is fine to use my whole body to try to control the recoil and stop the gun from rising up that's fine on one target you know like tactical turtle one target that's fine uh, but when we start swinging around doing multiple targets and that type of thing that type of thing you're not going to have any precision so like for for uspsa like tensing up your whole body is not the move what i'd say is just hold the gun with your hands all right Relax your the rest of your body. I'm just gonna hold the gun with my hands and I'm gonna look at a spot on the I'll look at a spot on the target. Now watch how the gun behaves. You can see the gun plainly rises just a little bit more. Okay, but I'm not working that hard. There's no effort being put in. And as long as I maintain my focus on the spot I'd like the gun to return to, it's just gonna keep steering back to that spot without any effort from me. Okay, so I don't want you to be thinking like I'm fighting a battle to stop the gun from rising up in the first place. That's not the thing. Just just keep looking where you want it to go and you'll get used to like, yeah, I'm just kind of ride this. Let the recoil do its thing. I'm going to keep looking at that spot. It's going to keep coming right back for me and you'll get used to that. Okay, if you're shooting a dot, especially, it'll be a big indicator for you if you see the dot go up and then come back down below the point of aim and then, then flash back up into your vision, what's that telling you? You're forcing it down. Forcing yeah, like you're doing that. You're doing that, okay? If you look at it like this, I'm gonna fire a shot in the center here and not return the gun. Hold on, I need some ammo here. So I'll fire a shot, the gun goes off the recoil, I'll fire another shot. So without any effort from me, if I just fire a shot and let the gun go up and don't return it, this is where my my gun will go to like how much effort do you reckon it takes to have my gun go from here to here it's like nothing okay so i don't think like, i'm not i don't want you to feel like you're doing using a lot of effort and if, again if you see the dot if you see your dot that'll be easy to see with the dot especially if you're pushing that back down below the point of aim and then it's coming up like you're working way too hard dude just relax look where you want to hit and again let that let it come right back into your vision that's what we want okay a lot of stuff here to recap. Look at a small spot in the target, at the tone, draw the gun, mentally focus up on that grip. Get a grip you're happy with, look at the center of the target, and then it's just sight press, sight press, sight press, sight press, and you're gonna be managing that hand tension to make sure you're not doing that sort of shit. That is the point of this exercise. If you make a mistake, it's important that you see it, feel it, understand it. You don't need to beat yourself up for the result on the target. I don't really give a shit about that part. It's just about you understanding what's happening, and we'll try to correct those errors at speed. Any questions? Okay, so to make my job easier, I'm gonna split you into two groups. We color-coded it, red and blue. So it'll be red, I'll be shooting at one time, 
Well, blues, stuff, and mags. That's kind of the idea. I did black and white in the last class, and I got some weird looks. So we're doing red and blue. Okay? Sound good? All right, red, come on up. Shit together. All right, so we need a way to practice some piece of this at home. So uh, our next exercise I really like here uh, is where we're just going to do the trigger control component of this. So uh, if we're doing slow fire group shooting, it's, hey, look at a spot, stack the pressure, stack, 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 and then your gun goes off. Okay. When we're doing this shooting at practical pace, that's not really how it goes down, is it? It's like you see your sight flash on that spot, you're pressing it, you're you know, ripping the trigger back right away. Uh, so in order to simulate that, what I can do is set my, set my delay to random, you know, put my sight up on the target, you know, and then at the tone, I'm going to react to that by smashing the trigger back immediately. Beat press, right? So I'm not reacting to the visual stimulus, it's audible now. And you can see right away if something happens. Let me make an example for you. It's pretty apparent what's going on there. So now when we take away the recoil and the blast of the gun, and you're just, you know, doing it dry, you're gonna feel precisely what your hands are doing. Okay, and then working with the dry fire, you can get your hands doing what you want. Now this kind of ties into a weird idea of um, what I tell people is if your dry fire always looks good, like you assess your dry fire as, as good all the time, you're doing it wrong by definition. Now why I say that is your dry fire is meant to simulate issues that you're actually having, reproduce them, right? So if I'm doing my dry fire at home and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. cool, yep, doing the dry fire, sights look good, but then I come out here and I'm shooting, and, well, I could pick a lot of these targets. My, you, you see that black paster? You see how your hits are patterning against that black paster? I should be simulating the issues that I'm actually experiencing or my practice is by definition worthless. Does that make sense? So this is gonna really, really simulate what's happening. You know, again, reacting immediately, beat press, okay? Um, again, because you're doing it dry, you can really focus up on your hand muscles. You can feel exactly what's going on. All right. Now, one interesting issue here is where to start with your finger on the trigger. Now, you didn't hear me talk about it, but a lot of people like to have a, you know, a, a complicated way to, to work the trigger. So it'll be like prep it all the way, then press or like stack the pressure onto the wall. Then put, you've heard stuff like this. Yeah. Um, if you want to do that, that's fine by me. I don't really care. However, you have to actually practice it the way you're going to do it. So start with your finger out of contact from the trigger, then at the tone, you're going to work the trigger the way you work it. Okay, so it's very tempting on this drill to stack up the pressure to the wall and then be press. And then again, you'll, you'll think like, oh, I'm, I'm really good. But you're not accurately simulating what's happening. When you're shooting quickly, your finger's gonna be flying off the trigger probably. So you wanna set that up and actually work through that issue. Um, does this make sense to everybody, I hope? All right, so let's get everybody on the blue line, blue and red, blue and red team on the blue line. We're gonna do this dry, then we'll load it up and we'll do it live just a little bit, okay? Cool. Okay, so uh, like I said before, when we started doing this exercise, like this is not a performance drill. I'm not like scoring this. If you're doing it well, I just came back, came by like, hey, go faster. <laughs> like, let's see what happens. And what you're trying to do here as you're shooting this is you take a look at your target. You know, we shot a lot of rounds, a lot of different distances. Like, this is your target. You should understand like what is causing it. Clearly there's a pattern here. Some low left, right? There's something happening. You understand what's happening? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you see it, you feel it. That's what you're trying to get out of this, okay? This is showing you how it is you're supposed to be gripping, interacting with the gun, and like this is this is how to get to the next level. Of course, when you go shoot a stage, like if you're gonna go, you're gonna shoot a stage bore or whatever this afternoon, you don't do you don't just like rip, you know, rip it and rip it. You can back off a little bit and you can just control your outcome by carefully pressing the trigger on the targets you have to. But for training, you see how quickly this exposed, like, hey, this is what's going on with your grip. And you, you'll also notice like these targets, they're a little bit different for everybody. Maybe there was something visually which changed, 
Figured we dulled some people's sights, included some dots, changed a few people's grips, and uh, it, because people have different issues. Every, every target looks a little bit different, right? But as you shoot it, you, like, I think all of you understand what you're doing, right? What you could do better. Now, the way that you actually train this, is you go home and, like, again, you do dry fire draws, like, all right, draw up into my grip, get my grip right, and work on that so I don't have to think about it anymore. So I come out here and I'm shooting some more, and now my habits are changed, and I'm kind of in a different place. And the next time I shoot this, it's a different outcome. Does that make sense to everybody? But this, like, you should walk away from this guy. Yeah, I understand what I need to do different. Okay, we're gonna skin these, we'll skin these targets down and put up new ones and we'll carry on with uh, the training. You guys have had enough of the slow fire nonsense, I assume. You ready to do rapid fire? Okay, good. So, this exercise is pretty closely related to the previous one. Uh, now we're gonna, we're gonna consider, I guess uh, this exercise we'll be considering the USPSA scoring system, which means we're going to be shooting really aggressively, and what we're looking for in matches, especially, is A's and close C's. You know, up at up at close range, I like to see all A's. At distance, we start left, letting them slip into the C zone. Uh, why? Because it's uh, kind of counterproductive for the scoring system to sit there and insist on all A's all the time when the targets are at distance, or they're tight, or they're risky, or whatever. That's just not productive because of the way the scoring system's set up. We need to be emphasizing shooting quickly. So anyway, I'll make a demonstration for you here. two shots, okay? Let everything reset, two shots again, reset it, two shots. I'm doing uh, four pairs for a total of eight shots. You could do more or less if you want. That's not really the point of this. What we're trying to do again is master that grip. So uh, first thing to point out here is when you're shooting at this, this is the practical pace you see people shoot the match, right? They aim the gun at the center of the target at this distance, and then they rip two shots as fast as they can pull the trigger, yeah? That's, that's fair? Mm -hmm. All right, so the first thing that's weird about this is uh, we call this predictive shooting as opposed to what we're doing previously is reactive shooting. So previously we're reacting to each sight picture. Now, based on, we're gonna be shooting quicker, so based on training experience, we have to predict how the gun's gonna behave. Now this is the case because there's not a human being on the planet that's brain works at this speed where they can you know, it's going like pop pop. They can see that second sh shot, the second sight picture come back down, then consciously make a decision to fire the shot. That's not real life. That's not a thing. All right. When you're shooting this fast, it's based on training experience. You have to understand how the gun's going to behave and what you can get away with because you're shooting faster than you can react. Does that make sense? All right. Now, the, the strange thing for this, for people to understand, is like this doesn't mean you aim the gun at the target you want to shoot then kind of like close your eyes and fire a pair of shots. That's not what you should be doing. Want two eyes open, looking at that spot on the target and paying attention to how the gun's behaving because that's gonna help you learn how to make the gun behave the way you want it to. And what I mean is, if I see my, if I see my sight go like this, up, down, over here, up, down, over there, what's that telling me? It's going. You're pushing the gun. Yeah, I'm doing this. If I'm shooting, a, the shooter goes like that, or she goes up, down like that, then then wobbles. It's like, oh, my hand's super tense and I'm diving the gun down, okay? And so on. Your sights are going to tell you the story about what you're doing, okay? The, the, the thing that you want is for your sights to behave very predictably and very consistently. So depending on the gun and you, how the, all of it's set up, your sights may go up and down vertically perfectly like that. It might go a little bit up to the right, you know? It, it, something like that, but you want it to be the same every time. If it's going hoo, 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 like that, like that's telling you something. You're changing the way you're gripping the gun, okay? And that doesn't that doesn't work. You want to be really paying attention to what you're seeing, okay? Again, another thing to watch out for is if you see the gun come out of recoil and see the sight sitting there shaking, that's in, indicative of a lot of tension in your firing hand. Like you're just like because you know you're making the gun shake. 
just the key thing to understand here is like you're making the gun, gun do what it's doing for the most part. So pay attention to that and try to get your hands to you know behave consistently. So then the gun will behave consistently and you'll get a good outcome. Uh, diagnosis for this is not a lot different than the previous exercise. If right-handed dude typically is going to over tense their firing hand, push shots to the left or push a blow. You might also get trigger freeze where you you know kind of double clutch the trigger. You can't release your hand off the trigger and right? release your finger off the trigger. The fix for that is relax your firing hand, okay? If you have shots tracking up and away and recoil, the more support hand's gonna do the trick or make sure you're focused on the spot that we gave you on the target. Eventually that spot's gonna go away, by the way, so uh, make sure that you focus up on it. Um, the other thing I can say about this is when you're, when you're shooting this drill, you shoot for where you want to be, not for where you are. And what I mean is, if you look at a, like let's say you're in B class, and you look at some M class dude at your club, look at how fast in a match, like he he comes, he gets on a target, and he'll go pop pop like that, or whatever you see him doing, you wanna you wanna mirror that, you wanna shoot at a pace where you can be competitive with that. Uh, you know, shoot at that pace, even if there's mistakes, like understand what's happening and train for where you wanna be. This isn't where you train for where you're at right now. Does that make sense to everybody? So again. Don't feel bad if it's you're not getting the outcome you want. You can always control the outcome with pacing. Like that's, that's not a big deal. This is to learn and understand what's happening. Uh, to give you an idea, though, back up a little bit. What do you reckon is a feasible pace from back here? As fast as I can pull the trigger or something else? Okay, send it, trigger. Yeah, send it. Fuck it. Attitude. Send it and see what happens. <laughs> you can see, push a little bit left. I need a little bit less firing hand tension if I want that to work for me. This one got up and away from me a little bit. I got to fix my bitch grip over here, clamp down that, that support hand, and look at the center. Don't be afraid to experiment like that. This is how you're going to learn. This is how you're going to get better. Okay? This, at, the, at the core of this, this is a marksmanship exercise. Okay, this is how you learn to make the bullets go where you want. It's just you're shooting at a practical, like real world speed that you're gonna do in matches. And you're gonna fix your issues at speed rather than you know slow down and get your hits. Okay? Make sense to everybody? Alright, cool. Let's uh let's get to work. Let's talk about how to do trigger control at like a practical pace or what you're gonna be doing at home. So again, you're seeing your shots blip over to the left for the right-handed people. That's that's the tendency. You've got to really be, a, a, you know, in tune with what your hand's doing to not do that thing. Okay, so what you want to do in dry fire, of course, is recreate this. So if you're shooting a single action or striker fired gun, what I'd like you to do, you'll press the trigger and it'll go dead the first shot, right? Take your finger out of contact with the trigger and then mash back into it. So one thing that I like to do is I'll, I'll hit the trigger with twice as much force as I think it's going to take to set it off if it was shooting live ammo. And by doing that, you can see the tension in my hand here. You can see that, right? Over here. You can see the tension in my hand, right? So I want to be able to have my hand, my firing hand tensed up mashing the trigger back and I don't see the dot flicking to the left. So like instead of the recoil force kind of tensing my hand up and I'm fighting that, I'm going to be, you know, mashing the trigger, like pressing twice as hard as I think I have to. And that kind of is a good simulation for what the recoil is going to do to your hand, you know? So when next time you go up there, I want you to give that a try, you know, mashing the trigger back. If you have a safety on your gun, thank you, Andy. If you have a safety, It'd be nice to set the safety on 
and then the trigger is not going to move from that position, you know? So I can, again, simulate the same thing. Press, 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 press. All right? I can be in tune to it. I don't want my thumb to move. Nothing. And this is way harder than you think. Again, this is going to simulate what's actually happening when you're really shooting. All right? So you need your dry fire to do that. So, like, again, put double the pressure you think you need to set it off. Take your finger out of contact with the trigger so you know if it's a live gun, it will reset. Then press in again. And this will simulate what's happening. It's, it's a really good tool, especially for your dry fire. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? All right, so we'll try, like, when you go up next time, well, as you load, try that. And you're gonna get, uh, you'll, you'll get the picture, I think, pretty quickly. All right, cool. Um, red, red. G gentlemen, as promised, you shot a lot of ammo this morning, yeah? All right, so, so we can practice everything dry fire except one thing, and that's the feeling, like the experience of the gun in your hands and recoil. So I like to say like, uh, explaining grip to someone's like uh, explaining the color pink to a blind person. It's like they don't have any frame of reference. I'm colorblind. Okay, do you feel, I hope you feel personally attacked by these. No, it's that. perfect. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, good. Analogy. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, yeah, it is. You're I like. can't explain to people what color something looks to me. Right, and it's like, the, the problem when it comes to gripping your pistol is like, I can tell you like 70-30 grip or do this with your pinky, whatever the fuck. Your perception of what you're doing, what you're doing is gonna be different than what you're actually doing. You're gonna be under pressure. You're gonna be, you're gonna be feeling recoil. I mean, there's so many things happening. It's, like, it's very difficult to really understand what to do. It's better have you shoot the gun and have you experience like how it feels and what's happening. All right, that's what we're trying to get out of this. Uh, for my own training, for me, this is half my rounds in a year. It's not half my time, it's half my rounds. So if I shoot 50,000 in training, 25,000 rounds on this sort of thing, right? Because it's so critical that I, you know, interact with the gun like this. As an example, I've been uh, been shooting a lot of rifle lately, right? And it's the same, it's, it's the same thing. So I go up, practice with my pistol, take the rifle out of the truck, magazine's like, all right, doubles, ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. Now I'm at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 yards but it's the same mechanics. I'm just learning the mount, understanding how to feel it, seeing how the dot behaves, all of this shit, all right? And changing how I'm interacting with the gun in order to get the outcome I want, all right? This is, this is exactly that. Now, what, what you're trying to get out of this is an understanding of like, all right, this is how I grip the gun, this is how this should feel. And then when you go do dry fire, you reproduce that feeling, right? So every time you draw, uh, you draw the gun, it's like you recreate, the feeling that you need in your hands and you you know actively thinking about it and engaged with it you know right that's that's what you're trying to do and uh, if you do that at home and dry fire over time you'll then find you come out and you shoot and you don't have to think about it anymore you're just doing the thing with the grip you know like that that's that's where you want to go with this that's really what you should take away is the feeling of what the gun should be like in your hands in order to get the outcome you want does that make sense to everybody do you have any questions what we did this morning? All right, I think it's a good time to eat lunch. Yeah. Union soon, so hopefully it'll be long enough that I look like a total piece of shit. Okay. <laughs> I don't have don't have much to go. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna make a couple examples for you. One will be a good example, and one will be a not good example. I won't try to make it subtle which is which. Number one, right, number one is good. So what you want to do, obviously as you're shooting, like I mentioned previously, any tension or body, this is counterproductive for what we're trying to do. You want to just hold the gun with your hands and forearms. That's it. Keep your head up in a natural position. Look at the thing you want to hit. This is helpful. When I'm done shooting the thing I want to hit, I just shift my attention to the center of the other target and like wait for my sights to come over there, then you shoot that. Now, it's easy to say that, it's kind of hard to do it. So the reason we're doing this exercise is we're going to 
draw the guns aggressively and smash this close range target with six shots. What, like what's appropriate, of course, is looking through the gun, you see the red of your fiber, the red of your dot, just the color here, and you start running the trigger. How fast are you gonna shoot? Fast as you can. Like just fast, like literally as fast as you can pull the trigger, right? Like that's, that's what you're gonna try to do for competitive shooting when the targets are five yards away and you're standing still. Like the scoring system encourages that. You stand there like bah, 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 bah. okay? The reason we're shooting six shots on that target is as you as you've noticed that you're doing rapid fire, it's gonna induce a lot of tension. Tension in your firing hand, okay? You saw my posture change when I started leaning into the gun. That'll be if you see that your fiber, your fiber or your dot dancing in front of you. A lot of times people see that and they key in on it, they start tunneling in on what they're seeing there. Like that gets all their attention is that sight dancing. They start looking at that. And then when it's time to transition to a different target, instead of shifting their vision from black spot to black spot on the target, it'll, you're, you're looking at the red thing here and trying to push it to where you think it needs to be. A good example of this is how you use a mouse pointer. So when you're on your computer, you'll say, all right, look at icon, pointer comes to you, click. Look at icon, pointer comes to you, click. Okay? That's the way you use a mouse. Like imagine following the pointer around. It becomes very, very difficult very, very quickly. Okay? That's what this is going to induce. Okay? So again, focus on the target, try to keep a nice natural posture and be very aware of any tension in your, you know, your, your shoulders or whatever, because you saw there when I transitioned to the back target, I way overran it and the gun came back. Like this will be very, very common stuff to happen on this exercise. Matter of fact, it's what we're trying to induce so you can work through it, okay? Does this make sense to everybody? All right, so uh, we'll give this a go and then we'll uh, get everybody to try it and then we'll, uh, we'll move on. So the uh, red and blue group, that stuff's dead. Uh, like we don't need to use that anymore. It'll just be half the group at a time and then the other half, if that, if that works for everyone. Sound good? Mm -hmm. All right, cool, let's get all right, we're going to talk about um, aiming, and I think a better word for it is confirmation. All right, so the way that you're going to save time is not by uh, not by following the same process, whereas like seeing this, you know, seeing a perfect sight picture and you train a lot, and then you see that picture faster. That's not the way it works. The way that you save time is by you know cutting time out of your aiming strategy. All right, so let me, let me give a few possibilities. All right, so I'm gonna look at that black spot on the target, or if there's not a black spot there, I'm gonna direct my attention to a very small spot on the target. Now, does that change if the target's far or close? No, it doesn't, it's really important. You always direct your attention to a small spot on the target, always. And the way that you, uh, the way that you take advantage, I suppose is a good way, but you take advantage of the closer targets is by aiming less or confirming less. So some possibilities are just aiming, seeing the outline of your gun. So I look at a spot, like let's say Joel needed to get God for whatever reason, you know, I see the outline of my gun on the target, all right? And depending on the distance, that might work for me. So like two, three, four, five yards, that'll probably work, okay? Uh, out to 10 yards, 12 yards, uh, guys with dots, maybe you just see the color of the dot. So your dot doesn't even look like a dot, you just see the color and react to that. Uh, that's why fiber optic sights are nice. I can, I can bring the gun up and without regard for the rear sight at all, I can just react to the color uh, of the sight. And then as the distance and difficulty increases, I'll get more and more towards a, you know, a perfect sight picture with equal height, equal light, you know, in the uh, front sight perfectly set. Does that make sense to everyone? So I'm gonna show you like a little exercise to highlight this. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna, I'll give you the, the aiming strategy I want you to employ on each one of these targets. Uh, and you're gonna start with the gun pointed at the target stand, at the tone. At the tone, you bring the gun up to the black dot. And then when you see, you know, you see the right thing, you're gonna react immediately by pressing the trigger. Okay, so your attention's always on a small spot and then you wait to see a certain thing from your sights. At this distance, what's appropriate is the color of your fiber optic without respect for the rear sight. You don't need to worry about that or just the color of your dot. So you just react to the color. 
that make sense? All right. So I want you to watch how long the gun's on target before the shot gets fired. So I'm looking at the black dot. was that gun pointed there before I fired? Almost immediately. Almost. Yeah, it was almost immediately. The rule for me was the targets are this close. If I draw a line between your eye and the target, like as soon as the gun gets to that line, you should recognize that and boom, get on the trigger right away. All right, this is this type of shooting, this like color confirmation, like just reacting to color. This is where most of you can save lots of time. Okay, lots. The target back there. Now I'm going to bring the gun up and I'm going to see fiber stopped through the rear sight. If you're shooting a dot gun, your dot should look like a dot, not a streak, but a dot. It doesn't need to be stopped and stable, but it should look like a dot. Okay? So we'll see how much time this has. say not a whole lot you're shaking your head like it's not a big deal it's two tenths of a second difference yeah. if i take that over a stage and stack that up over like 12 targets it's a shitload of time right all right so what i what the takeaway is for this for most of you what it's going to be is like oh if the targets are of a certain distance i've got to be just reacting to that color okay that's where i'm going to that's where i'm going to make time now one challenge that I mean, pretty much everybody has is as the targets get closer and faster, they stop looking to a small spot in the center of the target. They stop doing that and they just look at the shape, the color, and they're like, ah, go faster, and they start blasting. Okay? That's not, <laughs> you're like, yeah, fuck you. Oh, wait. oh, no. No, that's not the move. You're going to look at a spot, and again, you make, you adjust your speed. This is why I don't like terminology about like, pacing like how fast I go it ain't about fast or slow I'm going to direct my attention to a small spot on the target doesn't matter how far it is but then depending on the distance difficulty and risk of the target I'm just going to apply a different aiming scheme like when I see the sight flash a certain way on the target like that's I'm just standing there waiting to see that and when I see it boom I start shooting okay did everybody get this so I just want I will have everybody try it because I want like I want you to understand the concept like I said the takeaway from this is going to be, hey, at these close range targets, you can really get after it, but you do it by reacting to the color of your sights. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I've given this some thought, Andy, believe it or not. No, I mean, for me. <laughs> yeah, dude. How else are you going to beat Greg? All right. With a stick? That's one way. All right, uh, let's get half of you up here. We'll give this a try. This one, nice drill. Nice little one-shot deal. You don't see that. I didn't like it. <laughs> Appreciate your honesty. Maybe you'll like this one. Okay. Uh, now, I, I said some kind of weird shit about recoil control. It's like, yeah, hey, you just control the recoil with your eyes. You just keep looking at the spot you want to hit, right? And let the gun come back to you. Now, when you're dealing with multiple targets, you kind of deal with it the same way, where you just shift your vision to the thing you want to hit. And you'll notice, like, the more you push the gun around, the more you're like, oh, I'm going to transition fast. Like, the more counterproductive it becomes. So to highlight that, we'll do a little one-shot exercise here. Where at the tone, I'm just gonna sh I'm gonna shoot the target that I'm pointed at, shift my vision to the other target, and the gun will go there. Okay. Now I'll make some examples for you, and it should be pretty easy to see what's going on. Now you notice there the gun just moved up to the target. Very, like, no real drama, right? Okay, so keep watching the gun movement. You notice that? Yeah. So, like, the idea here is we're just going to shoot one round into the target we're, we're looking at. You know, get some recoil, whatever. You shift your vision, and you'll see right away if you push the gun past where it's supposed to be. It'll be very apparent. And what you're gonna find, you do this a little bit, 
you'll see right away. It's like, oh, I just shift my vision to the, the other dot and the gun will go there without any drama or any effort. Mm -hmm. And I should also point out, these targets here, there's not even really any swing between them. They're just spaced in depth, right? Mm -hmm. Any That's questions good. about this? Okay, let's uh, try this one now. We ready to ready to work? All right. Now we're going to start doing target transitions. Uh, pretty simple advice here. Like all this stuff, I'm not telling you to do anything complicated. It's just hard to do. All right. Uh, just like pre the previous exercise, look where you want to go. Let the gun come to you. Now we're taking away the black dots uh, because you know. They don't give them to you. It's these targets are intentionally designed to make it hard to see the scoring rings. You know, most competitive shooting targets give you that reference point. These do not. You got to project that out there yourself. And we're going to look to a small spot on each of these targets. Okay. We're going to be working with target transitions here. The scenario is pretty simple. You're just going to draw your gun and shoot all the targets. I've split the bay into three segments, split it up with cone lines. All you do is stand on the blue cone and shoot the targets in your section. The poppers are going to be shared. The, both guys will, with the uh, on that line will shoot the popper. Sharing's caring, you know, so everybody gets to shoot those. Okay, so what I want you to do for dry fire, look where you want to go, let the gun come to you. Look where you want to go, let the gun come to you. Okay, now I'm going to de-emphasize trying to motor the gun around. You will find, like I said, it is positively counterproductive to do that. I want you to go as fast as you can go without overrunning your spots on the target, okay? And again, you got to project that little spot out there yourself. You always look to a small spot. Doesn't matter if the target's close or far, you look to a small spot on the target. Look where you want to go, let the gun come to you. Okay, now you're not going to hurt my feelings with this. Does this look fast to anybody? No. This does not. Now, I'm gonna shoot live ammo, and I want you to watch the gun moving between the targets. Does that look any different to anybody between the targets? No. In total, though, it was a, it was a you know, nice, efficient shooting, yeah? Okay, if you take nothing else from this, understand that. It is not about pushing the gun around fast. It's counterproductive. Pick small spots. Uh, okay, where did the time come from? How about this? What made that fast? You are not stopping on the target. Staring at it before. Exactly, so it was appropriate confirmation given the target, so I'm looking at that spot. As soon as the gun shows up for me, I'm reacting to what I'm seeing immediately. I'm not sitting there pissing around like, oh, make the sight picture perfect. No. And then, as soon as the shot's out of the gun on the target, I disregard it and I look to the next thing immediately. Right? So like, as soon as the sight's coming up, I'm looking to the next thing. I'm not sitting there checking my work like, oh, where'd that go? None of that. If you cut out those delays, you're going to end up being fast. Make sense, everybody? Now, uh, we're, we're going to go through this, and, and if you're shooting like that, what do you think I'm going to tell you? <laughs> you guys know me so well. Yeah, you get either you get corrections or you get told to speed up. There's no winning this game. Like, welcome to the suck, dude. This is my whole life. <laughs> when I'm out training, those are the two answers I get myself. It's like, yeah, go faster, or like, hey, dummy, you're trying to do this. Like, fuck, okay. Like, that's the way training works. Okay, so I might tell you to go faster. It's going to start inducing some mistakes. Let's say I'm shooting that left to right order. First shot here, second shot there. What'd I do wrong? Pull your eyes off too soon. Yeah, exactly. So here's the deal. You hit where you look for a better or worse. Okay? If, I, if it's very common on close range targets that you're going to be, a, you're, that you're gonna clack off a pair and you'll pull the gun off the target in the middle of the pair. The reason that happens is you'll put the gun here and you're like, oh, okay, start shooting a pair. And then in your brain, you're done. Like, yep, job done. And I look to the next target, especially if I'm in a hurry, I'm under pressure. Okay? So you'll start shooting a pair here, shift your vision up there, and it tracks right off the target. Okay? That's called a drag off. You don't fix that by slowing down and getting your hits. How do you fix that? 
focus. You, yeah, you keep your vision here for like two hundredths of a second longer. That's all it is. It's not much. It's not about the time. You just keep your vision there until both shots are out of the gun. Okay. The reverse situation can also happen. Coming into a target, you're getting on the trigger before the gun showed up there. Usually that happens like when you see your sight touch brown and you get on the trigger, like that'll produce the same thing. The solution there, focus into a small spot on the target, even if it's close. You don't change, like for this reason, the, the closer and faster the shooting is, the more the discipline of your vision is going to start to punish you. You know, you're going to get hammered. This is why you see fast, great, great shooters, fast shooters get misses and shit on close range targets. It's not about like the mechanics of shooting. It's they get ahead of themselves with their vision. Even a couple hundredths of a second, you're toast. That's how that happens, especially under pressure. Okay, so you want to be very, very careful with that. And as you start to step on the gas, that's those things are going to start happening. Now, you also want to be very deliberate at the point you pick. You'll notice here, these targets are spaced out vertically. Okay, a lot of people just turn around. No, you have to look up to that target. If you've got a target with a no-shoot on it, I mean, here I'm looking off the center of the A-zone. Obviously, I don't want to touch the no-shoot. I'll maybe eat some seeds to stay away from it, but, you know, I, I want to have some level of discipline. So you always are very careful the point you pick to shoot at on each one of these targets because spaced them out a little bit different for all of them for exactly this reason. So you're thinking like, okay, where do I look? Where do I look? Where do I look? You be very, very specific with that stuff. Okay? Does this make sense to everybody? So, so we're going to have three up at a time. I want you to do a dry fire like I did. Go through it as fast as you can do it smooth. Then we'll start with the live ammo. All right? Also, we're going to head over to the stage and I'll give you something to do over there as well. So let's go over there. All right, guys. Uh, if you want to, I'll leave a timer over here. You can go through this stage dry. You can go through it live. Like I said, you can do as much shooting as you want to do. What I want to talk about over here is how to how to mentally handle shooting the stage. So the, the biggest thing to understand today is you noticed, probably, you could consciously put your brain on one element of your shooting while you were doing it, right? And you could affect that thing. Grip pressure, like, hey, loosen up. Hey, tighten up. Visual discipline, like, hey, make sure you look to the black spot, right? You can put your attention on one thing at a time, right? This is why we have to shoot hyper-specific exercises. You focus it on one thing, and you can, again, you can affect that one thing. When you're shooting a stage like this, again, I can have my attention on one thing at a time, so I have to make sure it's a very productive thing to put my attention on, don't I? All right, here's another question. How do you drive your attention around for shooting normally? It's visual. Yes, the thing I look at is the thing that has my attention. It's how Greg's wife knows if she has it or not, if she's looking at him or if, she is, or if he's looking at her or if he's not. Typically, he's probably not. Right, there you go. I'm sorry to record this, Joel, but, you know. It's a how great how sorry are you really, though? Oh, well, she knows. She knows. Yeah. She knows. <laughs> She'll never see this video. All right, so it'll be good. It's just not that I'm not sorry at all. Fuck it. Okay. So, I want to be very, very careful what, what I put my attention on. And if you think about shooting this way, like, if you really get dialed in on it, you're going to understand that these wall sections and the visual, like, the stage part of the stage is all just kind of window dressing for the shooting challenges that you need to overcome. Does that make sense? Like, when you really get down to it, the wall sections, the fault lines, this is all just bullshit that gets in the way of you, you know, lasering in on spots on targets. Okay, so what I want to do here is be very deliberate about where I put my attention, talk through it. I don't need you to copy my stage plan, that's not the point of this, but you should think through it in these terms, okay? So you put your attention on the thing that is productive and then exclude everything else and you just kind of run your program while you're shooting. Okay, so we're gonna start here. Be looking on the inside, spot, spot, spot. I have to shoot three targets here. The next thing I have to do is move. I put down a red cone over there so the next job I have is look over to the cone, okay? And I run over there very single-mindedly. I saw a bunch of guys when they were going through the stage before, they're like sidling through the stage, look down there, look over there, look down there. You, I, you, don't, need to be, you don't need to be keeping track of where all the targets are at. You definitely don't want to be trying to score the targets while you're going through the stage. Like, oh, 
Well, I wonder if that's a Charlie or Dundee. No, you need to be very single-minded. So I'm gonna shift my attention to that red cone, run over that direction, look down to my gun at some point to confirm the reload goes in, look back to the red cone. This is why reloads are costly, right? They're costly in attention. I have to shift my attention around to confirm the reload goes in. Okay, when I know I'm gonna get where I need to go, look up to here, shift my attention onto the targets. Spot, 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 spot on these targets. And then again, look to the cone, drive out of position, look down, confirm the reload goes in, look back to the cone, run, 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 till I know I'm gonna get there. See if you look over to the right, look at a spot, look at a spot, look at a spot, look at a spot. Now you see my feet and everything are moving, all of that shit's happening, but I'm not gonna be consciously focused on any of that stuff while I'm shooting. I'm not counting steps, like that gets none of my brain power, zero. All I'm doing is I'm just gonna go through the stage, focus on those spots. When I see the sights flash appropriately on the target, I'm gonna start shooting. I, my brain's not allowed to wander, nothing, okay? You, you might notice, like, let's say, not to, not to pick on anybody, but let's say that you forgot the chamber around when you uh, made ready on this stage. You draw, and you're like, ah, click, then it's like, uh, 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 and then, and then from that point on, as you probably noticed, if you shot a few matches, like from that point on, it's usually like for that person's stage performance, right? The mark of a really experienced shooter is that you see bad shit like that happen, their gun jams, whatever, and they fix it and they move on like nothing happened. Like, I can promise you, internally, you're a ball of fire when that happens, but they don't, like, none of it's externalized. They get right back on the task they need to be on. Their brain stays on that task. They get through the stage. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can focus very, very single-mindedly on you do your job until the stage is over. Okay. Shooting at an aggressive, practical pace. If it needs an extra shot, it gets one. My attention stays right on that target till I know I'm done with it. You know, move through there. Did the shooting look fast to anybody? Honestly. Oh, your movement was fast. The movement was very aggressive. The shooting, no, it was like, it was, it wasn't anything crazy based on what we were doing. It was like, it was very controlled, very reasonable. Like, if I could, if I shoot a club match like that six stages, it's great. It'd be a very nice performance, okay? So, I've got left a timer here. If you want to shoot live ammo, shoot it. If you're going to dry fire, do that. Just focus mentally, like find a spot, find a spot. That'll be very productive, good training. Okay, we'll have three hours at a time over there, and we can just rotate through the next uh, you know, hour and a half or so. You, like I said, you can shoot as much as you want. I'll just be running, running the drill over there. You can shoot over here. At the end of the day, we'll come back over here. We'll watch everybody shoot, and unlike this morning, to be a little bit critical but try to be helpful any questions all right cool let's get to it as if anybody doesn't know that shirt is a form of bullying against joel what is it uh gmjp is his nickname g grandmaster joel park yeah yeah exactly so that's just bullying thank you please talk about the stage sir <laughs> fine that that is also bullying joel's new nickname is the hammer um, let's just talk about his college days, you know? <laughs> anyway, all right, you had a good day, you had a good day, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so, did you try, just really laser in, okay, spot, 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 cone, spot, spot here. Like, again, if you start thinking about, like, one, truly, this, this game, once you pick your stage plan, like, the, the wall sections, all that stuff, it, it is just bullshit in the way of you locating spots and shooting them in a disciplined fashion where you're applying the correct confirmation. One thing I'll say is that you're not ready to shoot the stage until you can close your eyes and you can like see a GoPro video without hesitation of every part of your stage, every little spot or thing you're to look at. 
when you can see the GoPro video, so to me, I, I can see, like, all right, all right, step to the side, target, 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 for me, look to the right red cone, look to the reload, back to the red cone, up, steal, steal, target, partial, look left for the cone, reload, look to the right, inside target, then look left, work your way in, target, target, partial, target. Like, I can see the whole thing without hesitating. And, and until you can do that in your mind's eye, you truly, you're not ready to shoot the stage. Because any hesitation, any 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 moment where you're like, oh, so I shoot that target, no, no, not that target, then you look over there, like, that's costing you in time, it's gonna cost you in attention, and it's going, like, any little mistake that you perceive you make while you're shooting the stage <laughs> is also gonna hurt you mentally because that's gonna just encourage you to, I don't know, make more mistakes is usually what people do, okay? So think about that, like, before you come up here and shoot, like, I want to see like mentally rehearse through this thing, make sure you have it, and then you try to execute it, and it just will come down to you executing shooting mechanics. Okay? All right, well, let's give it a go. But if he shoots it and it doesn't, then you get a reshot. That's not true. If he shoots it and it falls, then they set it up and he yeah. shoots it again. And if it falls that time, was it three out of five or was it five out of ten? Best five out of ten, I think. Six out, no, it'd be six, it'd be so six out of ten. Some, some, a so you should just of, knock it down. Yes. So you're six out of ten. <laughs> you should knock it down to them. Yeah. They're going to tenderize your poop if you don't. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> I can't. That, that, was, that was an interesting way to do it. Okay. We're going to be focused on movement today. So I'm going to give you three rules, things we're going to try to apply. You're going to be, you know, dry fire on the stage a bunch. You'll be able to shoot as much live ammo as you want. We'll be doing a bunch of drills, and you're going to be moving your feet a lot today. So. No, be prepared. All right, first thing, first habit. Like, again, three habits I want. Feet spread apart, knees bent when you stop. Okay, this should be what you're predisposed to do. Meaning, you're shooting into position like this, and if you watch, if you watch carefully, or maybe even not that carefully, most dudes, like, when they stop, they're gonna be like this, or like this. But yeah, I mean, it's constant. I mean, it takes conscious effort to get yourself, you know, this is why we have to train on it. To, to stop, like this feels like my home stance. This is cool, keeping my weight down low because when I decide like, oh, I wanna go over there now, like I can push out of position with nothing happening. Like no extra movement. If my stance is narrow like this, if my stance is narrow and I decide like, oh, I'm gonna move now, what you're naturally gonna do, you'll see somebody like bend their knees, they kind of coil up like a spring and kick their foot out and then take off moving, yeah? Now when you're doing that, Psychologically, that will feel very fast because you'll be you'll be exerting a lot. Of effort. You know, you'll be exerting a ton of effort, and you'll feel fast. But you will not be fast because it's inefficient. If you're reviewing yourself on video, you can always look at your shoulders, and you want to look for the moment that your shoulders start moving in the direction you want to go, as opposed to moving up and down. Yeah? Like again, yeah, like this, like that moment where your shoulders are dropping down. You see, if, yeah, that's that's just stacking on time, and it's actually it's making it harder. And if you're older, you have bad knees, something like that. It's actually harder on your knees. You know, you're gonna have an easier time. Like I'm gonna set up like this. Like when I want to go this way, I'm just gonna look over there, let my back foot twist, and I push it inside of one step. I'm moving in the direction I want to go. Okay, so. What I find, like the training perspective, if, if you get into this stance, like if you set up like this, you will quite naturally, without effort, be pushing out of position properly. But you won't cut down on it. Even like kicking your weight to the left before you move to the right, like you don't want to see that stuff. Like no extra. You know, you like you finish a, a stance like in the starters blocks. Now there's other advantages to position yourself like this as well. Let's say you've got a stage where the positioning is very sensitive and I kind of miss my spot a little bit. Instead of picking up my feet and you see the gun destabilize, you know, I can just lean over a little bit and grab that target without destabilizing myself. Because you know, every time you pick up your feet, you're gonna see a reaction in the sights. So this is uh, no bueno, right? Again, this will, so you can help clean up little fuck ups, which there's not many, not, not many stages you're gonna shoot that are perfect. So you wanna plan to be a little bit imperfect. That's gonna happen. Okay, another thing, for a scenario like this, where you have targets that appear and disappear, you notice as you were shooting this section of the stage, like, you, you were like sitting there on the sights, you're on the sights like, oh, I want to move. And then again, like, you're always sitting there on the sights and then wanting to go to the next spot, right? 
And while you're doing that, you don't want to be fighting for stability. You want to just stay down low and be very calm and patient. And then when you decide to grab the next target, you can move over there with a little bit of power. Okay, so there's a lot of advantages to keeping your weight down low and your feet spread apart. That's what I want to see. It's very good. Okay, now when you move, and especially in training, full power, full speed movement. That's what I want. Like you, uh, if you go through this stage tw uh, uh, twice, dry fire, you should be sucking gas at the end of it. So in training, this is good because if you're going full power, full speed, you'll start overrunning positions. You'll have to like learn to use your brakes and slow yourself down efficiently and all that stuff. Uh, you'll actually train yourself properly. Uh, and in a match, obviously, you'll be faster if you're going full speed. But what most guys do is they kind of saunter <laughs> through their practice. And then when you go to a match, they get adrenaline up and they start overrunning positions and stuff like that. Very common. So you want your training really to be aggressive. So, yeah, so for us today, like every repetition you do on these, on these movement drills, full power, full speed. And then again, you'll overrun stuff initially. That's fine. Just like you'll learn to control yourself. And it'd be way faster that way. Uh, you know, then trying to go slow and slowly ramp it up. Okay, the third thing, uh, you want the gun up and ready to go as you're coming into position. A good example here is uh, finishing the stage here, coming into position, run, run, run. I want the gun up nice and early as I step into position. Uh, if you're going around a wall, again, gun up nice and early. A good self check for this. You come around a wall and there's a target you want to shoot there, your gun should already be up in the picture. You know, it should be not necessarily lined up on the target, but it's up here in your vision. Uh, this is going to improve accuracy quite a lot. If you think about it, you'll spend more time with the gun up, stabilizing it, trying to aim. You see a lot of people come into position, they get to where their target's at, and they throw the gun up and start shooting because they're in a hurry. Whereas if you're a little more efficient, you're mounting the gun early, you're gonna have more time on the site, so be more, more time aiming and your accuracy is gonna go up. In addition, just being more efficient, having the gun ready to go. Early. Okay, so three things, pretty simple, right? Okay, so I'll go through the stage dry, try to apply these things. I want all of you to do this. Uh, you'll be doing this today. And I should say, if all the shit we do today, your dry runs on the stage, that's gonna be what you get the most value out of. Okay, so pay attention to my head's relationship with the gun. All of that stuff. Okay, so watching that, what could I do faster or better from a third person perspective? What do you think? Look okay to everyone? Getting the gun up a little earlier there, good. Yeah, I thought on your, your braking, your feet did come in just a little bit and then you... Oh yeah, the one slid out. No, exactly, okay. We'll try it again. No, I right, just point out one thing. This is the start position, right? And at the start, you know, notice I'm widening out into my stance, getting ready for that movement. right you can see I'm pulling air this is good this one I know like yeah I'm going aggressively now as I move around I'm assessing how much of my sights moving when I come into position all right if I see something I don't like I'll fix that with my lower body bend my knees more set my feet down gently all of that stuff okay watching my head on the gun did those look like they were good sight pictures to you yeah I mean I'm spending a lot of time a lot Okay. So this is what I want you to do for training. Go through here just like this and be, be watching how your sights behave. You can have somebody observing you, making sure your feet are doing the right thing, you know, getting spread out, your guns up nice and early. You will get a lot out of this going through it, but you want to, you know, push it hard a couple times, rest, you know, do it again. It'll be very valuable. Okay, I'll shoot it for you, then we'll head over to the drills.
No. I had to reload in there in an inconvenient spot too. Total time 13 seconds. Where'd the time come from? Up, ready, shoot. Yes. Move and my yes. And I was I was maintaining motion where other people were not comfortable. Now, if you watch carefully, I'm, I'm going to define movement as your shoulders moving, not your feet kind of wide. If you watch it through your feet, it doesn't always tell you the whole story. Okay, so what I mean is, here I shoot this target, and I was kind of stepping into this target. My feet were on pause, but my shoulders kept rolling, right? So I got to move through this target. Now, that, this is difficult, and probably most of you I wouldn't recommend it, not today. But that's where the time came from. Roll through here. And then, then you can see when, I'm, when I, I'm shooting, I feel like I'm done with the target. My weight's down low and I can put power into movement right away. Do the same thing here. Up, shooting nice and early. Roll through here. Roll through here. As soon as I got going, I need to stop moving through this section where most of you are sitting here hunting and pecking for targets. I mean, this is a difficult scenario but this is super common in USPSA, right? Where you kind of move it a little bit, targets appearing and disappearing and that kind of thing. So you want to get used to this and get comfortable like kind of rolling your shoulders through stuff as and when you're able. Okay, does this make sense everybody? So this, again, just like yesterday, the stage will be open for you. I want you to do a shitload of dry fire on it as we're working through drills. Watch each other. It will be very, very valuable, okay? And then we can do some live fire on it too. All right, let's go do some drills. All right, we'll refill mags and we'll do some drills. <coughs> oh no. Yes. But I'm going to make you a couple examples and then we'll talk. happening there right um, first i my mentality is not shoot move shoot i'm like continuously you could see the gun took a straight line from each target to the next even if i couldn't see it even if there's a vision barrier there i'm going to look to where i think it's at and the gun's going to track right to that spot and in, in my brain i'm like hunting for this target i'm like waiting for it to come out looking for the target and then, you know, when the sights flash on it, I'll, I'll take the appropriate action, okay? Uh, the second way is you know, what you'll see most people do. It'll be shoot and then a really, you know, drop the gun down and then move as fast as they can move. And then the gun comes back up and then starts shooting again. That's not the thing. We wanna be, we wanna be gun up, looking, looking to the next target, looking through the wall for the target. If it's an opaque vision barrier, look, be looking through where I think the target's at. I'm hunting for the next target, okay? My, my, I'm looking to shoot continuously. So compare this to your thinking on our stage, right? Yeah, so like when, if you, when you watch me shoot, if you're just watching me, you couldn't tell really where the walls were at, could you? Right, so in your brain, you wanna make it like the walls aren't even there. So, so I potentially put a vision barrier up to make that harder. So people do all sorts of things. Why is this bad? You're off balance. Yeah, it's like, here's the thing. If you want me to lean, put down a fault line and make me. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just gonna stand, I'm gonna take a half step further, stand comfortably and shoot, okay? Uh, now, many people's tendencies, they're gonna see the first, they're gonna see the first target they wanna shoot. So they'll, they'll shoot this target and stop. And then they'll be like, oh, oh, where's the next one at? Where is it at? And they start looking. It's gonna be, difficult to do but you want to shoot as you walk into targets and expose all of them so from a single view if possible to make it easy to shoot everything and then I'll, I'll keep that 50 50 weight distribution so when it's time to move I can push out of position really aggressively okay 
So you walk all the way, expose stuff, make it easy for yourself. Um, one other thing to pay attention to, as you do this drive, let's go over here. So I'm gonna go through it dry, and I want you to pay attention to what my feet are doing and how the gun reacts. So I'm seeing the sights more stable. I'm gonna feel confident. I'm gonna be like, yep, I'm down to shoot. Like, let's do this. Okay? Versus with the gun wobbling, it's like you're screwed. To, 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 make, to make it even uh, like this will be a little weird, but watch how quickly my foot moves. Okay. See my foot move out here? Is that any slower than that? No, it's just when I when I move my foot out quickly, I'm gonna gently set it to the ground like a cat. Okay? That's a big part of this is setting your feet down gently so you're not disturbing the sights. All right, this will take dry fire training. It takes some you know careful consideration, but with training you can get this down so you'll feel confident like rolling through a position where targets are appearing and disappearing. Okay. One other thing to pay attention to: start and stop this drill. Feet spread apart, knees bent. Good or no? Eh, a little narrow. Let's try it again. See that? Check. Conscious check. Yes, good. The same as if you're doing dry fire draws. You want to consciously check the grip pressure after every repetition. For this, you're going to have to consciously check. Like, hey, am I getting wide? Because the idea is you've got to train this way so when you go to a stage, like as you, we learned yesterday, you do not have brain power available on the stage to work through this shit. It's either going to be your habit or it's not. So you want it like the, the your habits get built in the training. Okay? Any questions about this? Okay, so we three up at a time here shooting. Dry fire all you want on the stage. You know, coach each other. You can shoot live ammo over there too if you want. Really squeeze down the stage times. So we push each other. Should be a fun day. All right, let's get to it. We're getting getting along pretty well so far, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do some more running now. So I'll make an example for you. speed when you move okay you heard me grunt like a female tennis player out of position just means I'm trying hard okay go I'm seriously go hard on this like really aggressive movement the way I like to think about it is you got to be in it, in it for like 20 30 seconds at a time on a stage physically you just go as aggressively as you can for that 20 30 seconds that's really all you need to do it's not like a, an aerobic exercise so don't be don't be shy about really going aggressive um, My hips are turned in the direction I want to go, hand off the gun, and I'm running, okay? So I want a really aggressive launch out of position. As you approach where you need to be, a few steps before there, depending on how fast you're able to move, you're going to start breaking, okay? So it's going to look like this. Does this look like anything that we've already been doing today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's like, you just think you're going to run mount the gun and then you're right into that gun up looking through the, the wall if you have one looking to put it together with the target like we were just doing this it's just the hard part is you're going to go from full speed movement to start decelerating you take short choppy gentle steps to slow yourself down and put a hand on the gun and you know build up your proper grip you know it's a lot of work to get your grip right yeah so build up your proper grip and put the gun together with the target as you're stepping into position. So you got to do three things at once. Step into where you need to be, finish up wide, build up a grip on the gun where you're looking at the target, and manage the shooting mechanics. 
there's a lot of things happening here in a small space. Okay, so again, this takes, this requires specific training. Okay, uh, again, the most powerful tool that you want for self-assessment is when the target that you want to shoot exposes itself, you kind of look at it, you like, play back the tape in your head after every repetition. You're like, was the gun up there in the neighborhood of the target when I, you know, when it came out? Or did I see target and like throw the gun up and start whacking the trigger? Right? That's the most powerful tool you have is like, hey, make sure that the gun's up there in the neighborhood before you start shooting. Uh, one other thing to point out here, pay attention to the elevation of my shoulders. Didn't move around a whole lot, right? So that's telling you, like I said before, I'm not wasting energy. Put my feet close together. This will probably look familiar for many. So now after after a couple hours of training, you look at that and you're like, well, that's fucked. <laughs> like, that's not the right thing. Okay, so dry fire this, you know, then we'll get back to live fire on it. And uh, we'll continue the training. Any questions? It's going good so far on the stage. I'm hearing some the times are coming down. You're gonna shoot, you're gonna smack these targets while you move, even if you don't feel comfortable with it or it's not appropriate for you today. Of course you okay? When you're done shooting them all, you saw what happened, right? It's like I uh, dismounted the gun in that space, I aggressively moved over, and then got to the other side of the barrels and whacked them off. Pretty obvious, we're gonna have a nice, gentle, heel to toe, low step type of thing. So I'm not disturbing my sight picture a lot. I'm gonna try to minimize that. You can see I'm gently stepping my feet on and off the ground so I stay nice and stable. Okay? Nice and gentle. As we were just doing, like the finesse part is, is big here, right? So I wanna be stable, I wanna hold my, hold my sight still. That's pretty important. Now you might have some idea like, hey, Get it done before you, you cross the 90 degree, degree angle view. Okay, Does make sense so far? All right, now visually, super important that you focus on a small spot on the target. Okay, if you're moving or the target's moving, it becomes even more important. Very, very commonly, people put the gun up on the target, 
since they're moving, they're going to perceive like, oh, I need to aim more, aim better, that kind of thing. And they'll start to tunnel into the sights. What will happen then, so not to pick up anyone, but let's say I was going to shoot Greg. All right, so I come up, put the sights up, I tunnel in here, now watch what happens. See this? My, my point of aim is trending right off the target if I'm looking at the sights. Okay? The, because the target's position relative to me is changing. And if I'm focused here, I'm not going to perceive that. I'll have a blurry object over here. Okay? So instead, if I keep my focus like right at a particular point, I'll track, yeah, that button right there. I'll track that spot without effort. It's going to track that spot. So if you push shots in the direction you're moving, you know, that's a that's a, an indicator you're probably focused on the site. You know, the front site, red dot, it would be the same effect. Okay? Rip yourself around this. Now as far as confirmation, I recommend not doing the predictive shooting, the fast double takes. Why? Well, all of the training we're doing for that was static. So if I'm like training static to understand how to predict how my gun's going to behave, well, all that shit's out the window when I start moving around, right? So I want to make sure that I'm seeing the sight return for each shot. So instead of, like, one sight picture, then whack the trigger twice, it'll be make sure, shoot your sight like a bouncing ball. Like, make sure you're seeing it come back down because as the circumstances get more challenging, you don't want to make sure you bring the sight down. Okay. Sound good so far? Now, I said it no should be shooting these on the move right now today in a match setting this is doable this for the guys like b class a class you know if you have a red dot some sort of advantage like that maybe you're shooting major this becomes like hey if you want to be competitive like a class like m class you need to be able to shoot these on the move in those divisions okay i'm going to make you do it today but you ought to be able to these over here at that distance, that's for fun, that's for training, that's so you really understand like, all right, what you can get away with when you shoot on the move, okay? Um, I'm gonna make everybody do it. The idea is so you get a good sense, like a good internal barometer about like, what am I comfortable shooting on the move, what am I not? It's really important when you go to a match, like you're gonna have a squad of different personalities there and you're gonna have guys making different decisions. You wanna be able to look at a stage, you're like, oh, well, should I shoot this on the move and should I not? Like, this, this doesn't sound very scientific, but you just take a gut check. Like, how you feel about it is probably the right answer for you, no matter what other people say. Because if you feel like you can do it, you're going to be aggressive, you're going to be going after it, that'll be a good thing. And if you get pulled into it, like somebody else pushes you into doing something you're not comfortable with, you're going to be doing this anyway, not really making much movement. Like, not really, you know, you're just making it harder for yourself at that point. So, like, really understanding what your capabilities are is super important. And this, like, being honest, this is the, the, the right side. That's just to challenge you. That's just so you can understand what to get away with. So, let's come on over here. So, everybody agrees this is probably not appropriate to do in that setting. Yeah? Okay. We'll give it a try. to shoot it on the move but just for a demonstration i'm going to shoot it static then move because you saw like yeah i could make the hits i was not very comfortable or confident about that but i could do it in theory okay Try it again. okay 
To your eye, it can be hard to tell. Let's say it. Well, this second. part is faster. This year, I think yeah, this I was running like a motherfucker, wasn't I? Yeah. That, maybe the second one may be faster. I think the second one was slower because by a second. The second one was slower by a tenth. By a tenth. Oh, that's it. Exactly. You don't understand this stuff unless you test it. So again, you don't want to be the dude that's like shooting like bitch mode, making it, you're just making it harder, especially you're juiced up, you're under pressure, you're you know, trying to shoot for performance, and let's say this is in the middle of a much more complex stage or scenario, it's like, you got to learn like, what, if, if I can't do it aggressively, if I'm not super confident with it, it's not the play probably, okay, and again, you don't figure that stuff out unless you're training, so like, I want you to try this, it's a good skill builder, you'll probably be surprised how good you can make hits, but you'll be so, you're like, ugh, I'm not really making movement. Over on the left side where the targets are wide open, you saw me like, like, like it was like a half run. Like I'm rolling, I'm ripping through there hard. Like, rah, rah, rah. That's what, like over there, that's what you want to get to. As you build skill shooting while you move, really what you expand is the, the speed that you can move and shoot. It's not about shooting, it's not usually about shooting more complicated targets or harder targets. It's like move faster and still get, get decent hits while you're shooting these targets. That's, that's where we want to go with this. This makes sense, everybody? All right, so just like before, you can shoot on the stage as much as you want, and then I'll be over here running this, and we'll, we'll get back to it, guys. Train's drill, so it's going to be easy. No, I'm my trick. Make a demonstration for you. Come look, actually. Oh shit! Let me turn the protection. Yeah, man, you don't need hearing protection. Uh, I have never been confused for a man, Joel. <laughs> All Subconscious. You can't think through that on a stage setting. It needs to be like you see a certain target presentation at a certain distance and you just know intuitively what you can get away with, like how to handle it. That's what we're emphasizing here. Okay? So, on this lower A box, look at the center, react to the color. Okay? Pretty simple. In the upper A box credit card, uh, you're gonna look to the look to the center, sight press, sight press with irons. If you have a dot gun, you're going to look to the upper edge of the credit card, dot press, dot press. Why am I looking at the upper edge? Offset. Yeah, we got an offset. That again, if you shoot a dot gun, like a lot of times you're going to have really tight no shoots, and especially shooting carry optics, like at this distance, you wouldn't be able to collect A's on tight targets, not just slap them on brown. You can't, like, you get punished for that because of the way the scoring system works. Minor. So you have to really understand where to put your gun. Okay, as we go, I'm going to have you go faster and faster. So as you go faster, you're going to start getting tense. Shoulder tension. What happens then? Transition. Yeah, yeah, you'll you push the gun too far. Really commonly, when people shoot the lower A-boxes, then they transition up here, they go like, boom, 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 when they're tense, they go like, like that. And the first
first shot goes right over the top of the target. You get tense in the shoulders, it's a problem. You so you get tense in the firing hand, what happens there? Trigger freeze. Lower, yeah, so down here, trigger freeze, and it would be very obvious if your firing hand's tense, you're diving the gun, you'll be pushing him down into the neck on that upper A box. It'll be real obvious what's happening there. Okay, this is a good drill just to work out tension and do practical marksmanship at real speed. It's easy to come out and set this up, just two targets, um, you know, three yards. It's, it's, it's harder than it looks as all of the drills we've done are. Okay, and it's just a fun one to blast. I mean, we're not going to do any more drills after this, so you can blast off whatever ammo you want to or don't want to. Does it make sense to everybody? It's, it's, a, it's a fun one. It's a goodie. So let's get after it. It's actually pretty good. All right, I'm starting the video, please. No more. All right, let's talk about, uh, so we're going to shoot some more. Um, I don't know, but we're going to do the wrap up now, because I think our stage is toast. Mm, that's OK. Uh, it was fun while it lasted. Big, big improvements on the stage, I think, today? Yeah. Yeah, decent. Decent. I mean, yeah, you were so good to start with. No, right? no, I'm saying I got faster, but then I was just little things, like if I made a mistake here, then I'm losing a half a second. Yeah. Okay, so you're just paying attention, which is quite good. All right, uh, let's talk through what's in this. So what I did, if you might be familiar with it, I have a bunch of books. I can hand you a half by 11 book that's got like 350 pages worth of drills in it. This is not that. What this is is as condensed as possible. You might notice I don't spend a whole lot of time talking in class because people don't retain it anyway. So making things brief is definitely helpful. The first half of this is uh, technical stuff, like uh, uh, how to hold the gun, how to do target transitions, lots of diagrams, lots of pictures. Joel even helped write this one. It's very interesting. That was the one you didn't pay me for that I helped write. That's right. But Joel did actually, Joel did most of the work. He definitely did all the grammar and corrections. So if you see an issue there, that's him. Um, but yes, there's lots of diagrams in here to explain like kind of the concepts we talked about. Um, let me get a, give you a good example of why, why I have to hand you this. Okay, we discussed this morning three good rules for movement. Things to pay attention to. If you need anybody to give them to me. Turn your hips like, in the direction. No, no, the three big ones. The big, big ones. Stay in your stance. Pay two, attention to what the gun's doing. So gun up into position. I'll kind of take that. Soft feet. Step in the room. Feet Full bar. I, I know. I know that nobody can do it. You know what? That's okay. That's why I wrote it down. Uh, you know, and, and you'll find all of it. All of the stuff is like that. Uh, that we, I mean, I can talk about like, hey, grip this or do that. But you know, at the end of the day, people don't really retain that stuff. What you hopefully retain is the feeling of your hands. You know, yes, sir. Be ready to shoot when you arrive. Right shooting. That's position. a good one. Arrive. I'll always strive to be ready to move. Yeah. And when you move, move aggressively as you can. Exactly, so reading it out of the book, there you go. <laughs> That's why I put it in there. All right, but again, like, this is not an abnormal group. You guys, it's not like you guys are, people aren't dumb or anything. Like, be, be, human beings do not retain shit when you just stand there and it doesn't work like that. Instead, you experience some stuff, you know, like the feeling of the gun in your hands, the feeling of pulling the trigger straight, the feeling of shanking shots. You felt like, hey, what different grip pressures did what effect that had on the gun, that stuff you will retain, right? The, the, the rest of the stuff is repeated in there so that uh, you get little reminders. So you can be like, hey, what was that thing about grip? It's like, all right, I made it as brief as possible. You can read that and think, and, all right, I get it. I get what to do. Now, the uh, the meat and potatoes of the book is the back half. It's a bunch of drills in there. Uh, it's basically the same stuff we did. There's a couple things added, maybe a couple things we did that aren't in there. But it's basically all the same stuff. All right, again, just written down, repeat. Um, now, as far as the, the live fire exercises that are in here, uh, for example, yesterday we did that double stroll, that rapid fire doubles. There's some verbiage to explain it, and then some diagrams of targets here. So you see that, the different patterns of hits. So like this is good at close range, like this is good at 25, and then we see the hits trending up one direction, hits trending here a different direction, and then like, some verbiage on the side to give you an idea of like, hey, if you're seeing this, this is likely the problem. So again, it's kind of like having someone here to tell you, right? That's, hopefully that's the idea. 
So it's like you can go repeat the, the, the drills we did, and you know they're repeated in there for you. Uh, the important thing to take away from this is how to actually practice, like what that looks like. So uh, in the last two days, how much dry fire did you do all in? No shit. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a good question. That's kind of a separate thing. You notice the value of doing dry fire when you're at the shooting range. It was very good, right? You could you could see way more stuff. And another way of putting it is, hey, set up your drill or exercise or whatever. Do dry fire on it before you start spending your bullets. Because the shit isn't cheap anymore. It's, you know, I, I would love to come out here and party like it's 2018 and shoot 2,000 rounds. But that's not the reality anymore. So you get me doing the dry fire. I mean, very helpful. Uh, but what do you think? In, in 90 minutes of dry fire? Maybe? Well, I, I bet you did more than that. On, uh, right. You saw the value in the dry fire, right? Everything we did like had a dry fire thing associated with it that you could do to work on that thing. Okay. With one exception, and that'd be just the feeling of the recoil in your hands. Like... Uh, that you can't really practice without ammunition. That's why we had to shoot a lot yesterday to get the feel. So, well, my recommendation is moving forward. You got a list of things, habits. Habits is the best word that you have that you'd like to change. Probably. Things like focusing on a small spot in the target. You know, doing target transitions without overrunning stuff. Um, some some guys are struggling with over gripping here, under gripping here, shoulder tension perhaps. You know, I would think, what you got to do or what, what habits you'd like to change. Now, the way you change your habits is by training frequently. Not training a lot, but training frequently. So, like, half the value you get out of training is when you fire up a training session, like, mentally working through, hey, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish? What am I trying to do? So, let's say you're one of the guys that you, you want to just redo your grip, like, less pressure here, clamp grip here. Coach, a couple of our 40 caliber guys got there. Got their hands taped up. Okay, that's that's a hint. Like, okay, that's something we got to work on. So when you take your gun for driver, you, you think through like, okay, this is the feeling I'm trying to reproduce. And you start drawing into that grip and producing that feeling, right? Like if you do that like five minutes a day, you're going to start changing that habit. And it won't take that long. And it, like you consider it changed when you can go shoot a complex thing, like you shoot a stage where you're not thinking about your grip and your grip is still doing the thing you want. But it only takes like a little bit, but on a you know five day a week, four day a week, like a regular basis in order to change your habits. You can come out to the range and shoot 500 rounds every other Saturday and you're, you're gonna have a very difficult time actually changing habits in your shooting. It doesn't work like that. If you, if you, if you think through, think about it, you come out here and like, you blast this or that or that drill, maybe shoot a few stages with your buddies, and you would intellectually understand what it is you're trying to do, but you would not be able to do it because the training's not there. Like we talked about yesterday, like you can kind of put your brain power in one place at a time. Okay? When you're shooting a stage or a match, all you can do is like look at the spots on the targets, look at the places to run to and that kind of thing, and the rest of it, you're just gonna do what you do. That's the way it is, all right? The changing of habits has to happen with regular dry fire. So what I, what I like to do is like, I have a few things I want to change about my shooting. I'll fire it up on the dry fire, do like five minutes a thing, work it like 15, 20 minutes until I get, until I'm not focused anymore. Okay. Why is it important to be focused? I mean, it sounds obvious, but there, there's an actual reason to be we focused on the thing you're trying to do. What's that? You have to channel your energy. Well, you do, but if you're, if you're just going through the motions and not actually in, in like really in command of what you're doing yeah. you're just going to make bad habits permanent so a really common one here and a few, this is a few of you guys is you have a i say i call it a dry fire grip where you you draw the gun a lot and if you're at home doing dry fire you don't get it's like actually the looser you are on everything the easier everything is and there's no recoil to check you so you draw the gun you kind of get a little loose then you come out here and start shooting you see people draw the gun they fire one shot and they're like, oh shit, recoil. Then they clamp down and then start diving the gun. Right? So I'm just gonna make that situation worse if I just go through the motions for an hour a day. That's counterproductive. 
I want to be in charge. Like, nope, my grip is this. I'm going to do it like, I'm going to do it right for like five or 10 minutes. And then I'm going to stop. Okay. So training in a very directed fashion like that is how you actually are going to change habits. So that's my recommendation. Okay. The dry fire drills we did that you got a lot of value out of, like I said, they're repeated in there. Drawing into your grip, you know, they aim, work the trigger quickly at speed, react to the speed. Target transitions are in there, and all you do is put a time limit on it, so you're squeezing yourself for time, and then you'll start to adjust some shoulder tension and shit like that, so then you can work through it. When I said yesterday, if, you're, if you always assess your dry training as good, by definition, when I said that yesterday, I really mean it. Like, you notice where I did the drills, like it was always a struggle. You're always kind of working at it. You know? It was never easy. Was, you know, that's that's really productive training. That's great. when you're engaged with it, you're struggling. But then when you go, you go shoot the stage, you just do what you do. Like, again, I, I think some guys like really got them, like, really improved, really understood some things. But that stuff's just gonna fade if you don't train it in and, tr and change it. Okay. Does that make sense, everybody? Another another thing to kind of put in your head. I'll put put this bug in your ear. Dry fire is your training. When you come out and do live fire, when you shoot a match. That's not training. That's a match. When you come out and shoot a, like a couple live fire drills, like in a practice session, think of that as your check. Think of that as uh, your test. Yeah, or even more observation. So you come out and you shoot. And you're like, okay. I did all this stuff, like what is the actual effect of this? So I give you an example. Like I had a guy in class like six months ago, right? He's he was slow, his gun handling sucked, you know, whatever. These are the problems. So here's what you gotta do for dry fire. Bang, bang, boom, he goes and does his dry fire. The draws are really I just saw him last week. Draws are really good, reloads are going in there good, a lot more aggressive shooting, really nice, but he was doing so much fast dry fire that he induced a lot of drag off transitions. So in the tar closer, faster targets, and, I'm, and you push him, you're like, hey, go faster, go faster. He'd start dragging off the targets every fucking time I could get him to do it. Okay? So then, it, this, like, the whole thing evolves, right? So it's like, you did good training. That was good. You're faster on this. You're more aggressive on this. This and that's good. You've created this issue over here. So now shift your attention to this to make sure you're really disciplined with your eye. You know, that kind of stuff. And you're only gonna kind of figure that stuff out by coming out and really, really testing yourself, shooting live ammunition, okay? And then being, it, it's not so much about criticizing yourself, it's just analyze, like, hey, what's happening? Like, what's happening, what's produced? Like, if you start connecting cause with effect, that's how you're gonna start improving. But you only do that by, by testing yourself and like really paying attention to the details, okay? So, Something to think about. Uh, any questions about the training, stuff to do? Shit, you guys want to shoot this drill some? Yes. Let's go do it.